vamos a conversar con eh, una persona muy interesante que está justamente en Lima para estrenar un documental sobre eh, una mejor vida, o lo que él dice ser una mejor vida, sin la creencia en un Dios. ¿no? Una mejor vida que tal vez podría estar basada en creencias filosóficas o eh, tal vez científicas. Para poder eh, realizar la entrevista lo vamos a hacer en inglés, así que a partir de ahora eh, tenemos que cambiar al inglés. In this opportunity we are with Chris Johnson, that is uh, in Peru to present a documentary uh, that is called uh, A Better Life, uh, um, and uh, is based on a book that he wrote um, a year ago uh, about a uh, hundred uh, atheists that uh, speak out. Uh, about the meaning and, and joy of, of a life uh, without God. Chris Johnson is a photographer which pictures have been seen in the New York Times. He also received the Kodak Award for Excellence in Filming. And his undergraduate degree is in film production, along with a minor in religious studies. Chris, how are you? Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, thank you so much for being in Peru. You are uh, traveling around the world, um, um, showing this uh, production of, of yours. And uh, how this project began? I mean, why? Because you, uh, you were telling me that uh, you worked as a, as a filmmaker for years, and then suddenly, like three years ago, you decided to uh, become an activist uh, for atheism. Why, why is that? Well, I really wanted to talk about atheism in a different way. Um, you know, when I was in university, I read all the new atheist books, The God Delusion, God is Not Great, mm -hmm. End of Faith, um, and they were great. And I still think they're great. But I think one thing that we're missing in the atheist movement is uh, talking about what we do believe. We spend so much time talking about what we don't believe, railing against religion and, and, uh, and the, 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 uh, the harms of religious belief and the harms socially that are caused by religion and religious institutions. But I think sometimes we, we miss out on talking about the good things the important things, and why life can be better as an atheist. So I, I really wanted to change that conversation. No, that's interesting, because normally the, the approach to atheism is a negative approach. You know? uh, it's a manifestation of things that you don't believe. You know? But it's not a, I mean, but atheists, if you don't believe in God, what could you believe in? Right, I mean, that's actually the interesting thing about it is that, you know, really, all atheism means is simply that somebody doesn't believe in God. So someone could not believe in God and, you know, be a horrible person, for example. I mean, that, that, the, those, uh, those aren't contradictory. But I do feel that um, without a belief in God, without a belief in the afterlife, and using reason and science and skepticism and logic, all of these things combined, Uh, will make your life better, not just for you, but for everybody around you. I think using all these tools that we have, um, I, think, I think things will be better in the long run if everybody kind of came at life in that, in that approach. And do you think that uh, religion in itself is something negative? Or, some issue, or, or even if it's not true, it could be uh, useful for humanity? Or is something that will always carry? You know? or at some point, religion will disappear, do you think? Well, to answer the, your first part, I don't think that religion is inherently terrible or evil. Um, I think it's a very natural, people have a natural inclination towards um, getting together with other people and, and solidarity with others and um, wanting to believe in something higher than themselves. So it's a combination of things. It's a combination of wanting to transcend death. It's a combination of wanting to be together in a community, a kind of a tribal thing. Um, it's also uh, dealing with the randomness of life. Why, you know, why good things happen to bad people? Why um, bad things happen to good people? Um, we like to think of things in binaries: good, bad. I think life is more complicated than that, and so that makes us uncomfortable. So we want to put things in boxes and say, "This is good. This is bad." No, it's, it's, it's like watching a movie. When you watch a movie, you want to know who are the bad guys and the good guys, right. and, and, and once no. you You, uh, you know, know that uh, everything is okay. Right, you don't like ambiguity yeah. at all. So I think, you know, to answer your question about, you know, will it go away, I, I think it, it will evolve. Just like if you look at Christianity now versus Christianity even 100 years ago, very different. Um, and I think as long as we keep pushing, it'll change. 
as long as society keeps moving forward. Look at you know, um, gay marriage in Ireland, for example. No, they very recently Catholic approved uh, gay marriage. Yes. And it's, a, it's a very Catholic country. Very Catholic country, yeah. So yeah, things are changing. We just need to kind of keep, keep going. I don't think it's inherently evil, but I do think that um, it provides many opportunities for um, people to believe things that can be harmful. Like a suicide bomber that believes that uh, if he commits suicide, killing a bunch of infidels will you know, go to heaven with right. 70 Two virgins, or something. right? Exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. Or you know the you know, Christians who do, who are against um, homosexuality. Um, you know, do all Christians oppose homosexuality? No, but it does provide very good justification for not believing that you know gay people should be able to get married. Um, it makes you. It, it doesn't make you always do this, but it makes it a whole lot easier for people to believe things that can be harmful. Okay, so do you think that uh, religions should evolve? Uh, maybe we'll become more spiritual and less um, based on, on authority? Because um, I w watching your documentary, uh, there was an interesting comment uh, that we are maybe wired for a type of spirituality in the Paleolithic, but there were no organized religion at that time. No? So this uh, new monotheistic organized religion just appeared with agriculture, really. No? Um, so maybe we're not even wired for this type of religion, but we are wired for spirituality. Do you think that religion and spirituality are two different things? They are complementary? Uh, could you be spiritual and non-religious? I don't always know what spirituality means. I think people use that word in very different ways. So I never know exactly what people mean. How will you define spirituality? I don't even know. I, I mean, that's a really tough question for me. Um, I, don't, I don't have a good definition of spirituality. People use the word, I think, to describe kind of feelings or emotions or a connectiveness to something outside of themselves. But like I don't a transcendent experience. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I don't quite know always what it means, so I try to avoid the word. Um, but I, I get what you're saying. I think that they're definitely we are wired to believe in things uh, like that. I mean, I think one of the mistakes I think that that atheists tend to make is that that the rational, skeptic mindset is the natural one, is the, the way that we you know, should always be, and that religion is um, a perversion of our, of our kind of rational self. I don't think people are in, intrinsically rational. Um, I don't think people are intrinsically logical. Um, I think that we have to work at it. We have to work and, and learn how to be rational as much as we can. It would be a good thing if we become more rational or we will maybe lose something. I think we should become more rational, but I don't think that it's our natural inclination okay, okay. to be logical and rational. Um, if you look at you know, psychology, how people believe, how, how we form our beliefs, how we make our, form our opinions, um, it's not rational always. It's, it's very, I mean, we are you know, very primal in many, in many ways. Um, we have to work at being rational. We have to work at being skeptical. Um, that's why people believe in psychics and water dowsing and UFOs, because we're not rational. And so we have to work at it. We, are, we, we always try to give meaning to things. No? Right. We, are, um, we do not tolerate much uncertainty. We, we need to find a cause, even right. if it's supernatural. Right. Going back to a topic of spirituality, uh, maybe you could be a, a spiritual person. Uh, without believing in the supernatural. If you, if you define spirituality as a search for different uh, uh, mental states, no? maybe with uh, fasting or meditation or even uh, using drugs, no? um, so you explore these uh, uh, different channels of, of the mind uh, in a way, uh, and that will be uh, um, interesting. You can have that being an atheist. You, don't not, you need to believe in the supernatural. No? Uh, but if you are spiritual and you believe in a spirit, in, in an essence that is floating out there that nobody could uh, really measure, or, you know, that's different. Huh? So, um, so maybe in a sense you could be uh, a naturalist and a spiritualist as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think if you can, um, the, the first definition you gave, uh, absolutely. I think that you know, um, if, you, if you look at spirituality as being the search for these different states of, of mind, 
in states of experience and consciousness, um, then yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, very much like, you know, I think Sam Harris likes yes. to talk about that a lot. And I think that's great. I think that's, you know, using these ideas to change our conscious experience uh, could be very beneficial. Um, but if you use spirituality in the other sense that you described as kind of an essence that is out there, maybe a consciousness, um, then no, I don't think that, that, you know, that would be a good idea. But uh, I think that's the way many people interpret the word spiritual to me. Do you think that there's a necessary conflict between science and religion? They say that religion is about morality. You know? And science is in principle. There's no, in principle, there's no, no value no, no, or no moral values in science. So the, that's why people think that we need religion in order to uh, uh, draw our moral values from. I think that for many years, uh, much of what people thought about science was not uh, about morality. People felt that, that science was strictly about um, observing things in the natural world, like physics, like astronomy, um, like biology, study of evolution. Um, I think recently, though, we're changing that. If you look at the work done in neuroscience, if you look at the, wor the work done um, by neurophilosophers like Pat Churchland in the film, um, these are people who are taking ideas in science and applying them to how we think about morality, how we think about ethics, how we think about how we treat one another, right and wrong, those kind of things. And I think that's wonderful. It's a really great step because I really think it is changing the way so that people cannot say now, you know, science is not about what is moral or what is ethical. It's only, you know, you can only get that from religion. No. If you look at the work that's being done now in the past 20, 30 years, science is doing work on these issues. It's not strictly the domain of, of religion. And if you look at religion as being uh, a cultural thing, a historic thing, um, you know, something that you do as a communal activity, like going to the theater or watching a film uh, or reading a book, then there isn't any conflict because it's not addressing issues of science. Like I said before, talking about religion, you can have a religion, you can have an idea, you can have uh, morals and people who come together for a common goal and purpose, and that's fine. And you can, you can appreciate historical and cultural uh, ideas and, and traditions. And that's fine too. But so many people, especially in the United States, uh, have crazy ideas about women's rights, about gay rights, about um, all kinds of different things. Evolution based on uh, the Bible and these, these ideas and atheists, you know, how they feel about atheists being immoral and terrible. How do you explain evil? How do you explain uh, the uh, beautiful things, beautiful things about the world um, without a creator? I have not studied a lot of science myself. I have not um, <clears throat> studied much physics or or anything like that. So I don't have that background to talk about things in a very scientific way. Um, but I don't feel that I'm lacking in that sense, because there are people I know who can explain these things better than I can. Um, and I don't need religion or God to explain these things. I think we do have explanations, uh, and there are people out there who really do understand and can explain the physics and science behind it. I think that's the important part. Um, and you can appreciate these things without having to believe in a higher power. And in fact, I would say the world seems to make more sense to me if there is no God. Do you, do you know what I mean? I, I think that if you look at how the world works, if you look at how your life operates, sometimes good things happen, sometimes bad things happen, sometimes good things happen to bad people, sometimes bad things happen to good people. And I think even thinking about people in terms of good or bad is, is binary and, and okay. problematic. I believe that people can do bad things and people can do good things. And some people do more bad things than good things, and some people do more good things than bad things. And, and religions could be the excuse to do bad things. Sure. Even if you're a good person. And you can be an atheist and do bad things too. I mean, it's not, it's not like all of a sudden being an atheist makes you a moral, amazing person. It doesn't. I think, though, it does, and this is, I think, the key point, it does, I think, increase the likelihood that you'll come up with better answers if you have a framework to start out with that is natural that is, you know, um, 
grounded in, in, uh, in rationality and skepticism. Uh, if that's your approach, I think you're, the likelihood, not always, but the likelihood of coming up with better answers is, um, is more likely than, than if you believe in things on faith. And by on faith, we mean because, you know? You encounter a true believer, and you know that he's wholly known only to religion, uh, and, and his life is miserable. It's, uh, there's no hope for a better life. During, I mean, how can you, uh, you know, put doubts in the head of that person? I think the best we can do is use the resources that we have to make life better for everybody, uh, as much as we can. Um, and, you know, I will say, I do think Peter Singer has a point okay. when he says that we're all very selfish okay. in many ways. I, I think that he has a point there. Um, because, you know, instead of uh, you know, doing what we're doing, we could be using our resources to save more people. I think that that's a, a very legitimate criticism of, of uh, uh, the human experience. I ask you, how do you uh, stop believing? And you tell me that you never believed in, in God. Uh, and that's kind of uh, unique, at least for Peru. Uh, normally all Peruvians, all uh, humanists and atheists in Peru have been indoctrinated in the past, and they have to work through uh, and reach atheism at the end. Huh? Uh, and it's a process. But um, what's the main difference between someone that has been indoctrinated and became an atheist, and someone like you that have always been an atheist? It's, it's, do you think that there's, uh, there could be a trauma or some sort of psychological a difference, uh, maybe, after uh, these experiences? Yes, I do think that there are many people who are very scarred emotionally mm -hmm. from their religious indoctrination. Okay. Um, and it's very painful and uh, process kind of leaving that. And oftentimes, if people are uh, indoctrinated as, as children, that means that their family is often religious. That then, if their family didn't also become atheists, then they have to deal with the, the difference between their very religious family and them being an atheist. Um, I think that uh, it can be very hard. And it's uh, to the family, you know, it's like um, if you are against uh, homosexuality, you think homosexuality is, is a disease or uh, a psychological disorder, you're not going to accept your homosexual kid. If you are a religious family, you will uh, maybe segregate you know, or throw out of the house your atheist uh, uh, son. Yeah, and I actually I spoke to many people um, for the book who are gay and atheists, and all of them said to me uh, that the atheist part was more difficult for their family than the gay part. At the beginning of the documentary, you make a point, and I, I started to think about it. Why atheists are uh, related with rapists? with immoral people, with um, all sort of you know, bad things. I mean, and, and when you see the evidence, there's not really good evidence that atheism or believing in God is linked to morality. I think that when you, look, when you get your morals from the process of using skepticism and rationality and logic and critical thinking, um, you're going to end up with better answers than if you get them from just, well, this book tells me so or this religious cleric tells me so, or just because. Um, uh, it's more likely to come up with a better answer if you have justified reasons for why this behavior is good and why this behavior is bad, or why in some cases this behavior is good and why that behavior is bad. So, um, but I don't know where, where, you know, honestly, I just don't know where that, those ideas come from. It just comes from very, it's a tribalistic thing, I think. It's a, uh, it's, it's just something that has come up oh. in many places. Yeah. yeah, rumors that come from the Middle Ages that atheists eat children. <laughs> right. It's, um, yeah, it's crazy. I want to ask you about your uh, future plans. You are at the moment traveling around the world, um, showing this documentary for a first time. We'll have the premiere uh, this afternoon in Peru uh, at uh, La Sociedad Secular Humanista del Peru. We'll all be there. Um, and. Uh, what are, what are your expectations? Are you going to continue um, uh, doing activism in favor of uh, atheism? I don't know what the future holds for me. For now, I'm just doing these screenings. I'm traveling around, uh, going to the United States after this, doing screenings around there, uh, all over, and trying to have as many people see this film as possible. I think it could really change 
the way we think about things and hopefully uh, make a difference in the world. I wish you the best for the future. Estamos uh, acá cerrando la entrevista con Chris Johnson. Síganos en eh, Facebook, en Twitter y en la página también de la Sociedad Secular y Humanista del Perú. Thank you.